Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you all about the poltergeist of Côte Saint-Luc. With over 450 documented ghost stories, Montreal is easily the most haunted city in Canada, if not all of North America. At Haunted Montreal, we are dedicated to researching these paranormal tales, and our channel puts out new videos in both French and English every second Saturday. Today we examine the poltergeist of Côte Saint-Luc. In June of 2021, a man named Jeff contacted Haunted Montreal regarding poltergeist activity in his apartment. He provided many examples of things moving on their own, turning on and off, and generally behaving strangely despite the fact that they were inanimate objects. But before we get into today's story, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we have a new story to share. And if you're already subscribed, a big thank you and welcome back. I'm so happy to see you again. Now without further ado, let's get spooky. In June of 2021, Jeff contacted Haunted Montreal regarding poltergeist activity in his apartment. He wrote, I am prepared to sign a sworn statement stating that all of the events described have actually happened. Jeff moved into his Côte Saint-Luc apartment in 2009, which is located near Cavendish Mall. However, he did not experience any paranormal activity until a decade later. In 2019, it would appear that a poltergeist either moved in or woke up from a long period of inactivity. A poltergeist, also known as a noisy ghost, tends to play tricks such as moving things around, turning lights on and off, adjusting the heat of stove burners, and other bizarre activities. Since the paranormal activity began, strange events had been happening in the apartment, with each spaced out about a month or two apart. According to Jeff, it all started with a rubber band that started teleporting. A rubber band wrapped around the kitchen garbage pail to hold the garbage bag disappeared from the pail and reappeared around the corner on the dining room carpet. This happened a couple of times. On another occasion, that same rubber band disappeared from the pail and reappeared wrapped around the middle of an empty oat milk container placed next to the pail for recycling. On another day, the same thing happened with a tissue box placed next to the pail. Jeff continued with more examples of paranormal activity in his kitchen. While I was doing the dishes after lunch, I felt something fall on my feet. I looked down and saw that it was a small towel. The thing is, this particular towel had been stored in a kitchen cabinet behind a closed door a few feet away from me. It seems to have teleported from there to just above my feet where it fell. Another time, Jeff was frying some cheese blintzes on a low heat. Just before he was about to take them off the stove, he noticed that they looked underdone, so he decided to turn the burner control knob to a higher setting. As he was about to do so, he noticed that the control knob had been turned to the off setting. It seemed to him that the poltergeist had turned off the burner because he didn't. The poltergeist also liked to play with the dish rack. Once Jeff had placed a drinking glass upside down on the rack to dry, but then he glanced at it a few minutes later and it was right side up. In another case, a round-tipped metal knife from the kitchen drawer appeared in the dish rack lying flat. Also, a small pot and a dessert bowl that had been put away the night before reappeared on the dish rack by themselves the following morning. There was also the time that Jeff had finished a container of Mrs. Dash salt substitute. He unscrewed the top, rinsed out the container and lid, and put both next to the kitchen garbage pail side by side for recycling. Then he went shopping. When he came back, the lid had been screwed back onto the container. Finally, a disposable aluminum candle holder moved 15 feet by itself from the kitchen pantry where it was stored to the top of the middle stem of a candelabra in the dining room. In the dining room, a picture fell off the wall with the hanging loop unbroken and the nail in the wall intact. The dining room radio, not a clock radio, had also been known to turn itself on and once during supper time, the lamp in the ceiling turned on by itself. The paranormal activity also happened in the bathroom. In one case, a toilet paper holder popped out of its receptacle by itself untouched while Jeff watched. Another day, Jeff bought a new plug for the bathroom sink and cut off the chain completely from the plug's ring since he didn't need it. The next morning, a single loop of the chain had reappeared on the plug's ring. On another occasion, the bathroom medicine cabinet door slid open by itself while Jeff's back was turned. He heard the sliding sound before turning around to see it open. And Jeff provided many more examples of paranormal activity all over his apartment, from the living room and dining room to near his garbage chute, and he would continue to update Haunted Montreal as to the latest happenings. 
When asked who or what Jeff thinks is haunting his home, he mentioned receiving a gum bone graft with real bone a month or so before the poltergeist activity began in fall of 2019. Jeff speculates that perhaps the deceased person from whom the bone was taken is haunting him. Another theory is that it could be his deceased father, who passed away in 2013, and whose picture Jeff looks at every morning to remember him. Jeff said, Poltergeist activity raises fundamental questions about reality, asking, what does it all mean? Jeff believes that the universe is not physical but mental, that reality consists only of our consciousness and we are having a collective dream. He feels that poltergeist activity could not occur in a physical universe, but it could occur in a mental universe where we are dreaming the whole thing up. As such, Jeff has no plans for an exorcism of the poltergeist that's plaguing his home. Indeed, he finds the whole experience fascinating. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who has experienced poltergeist activity in your apartment, Airbnb, or hotel? If so, we'd love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories about what could be going on. And hey, maybe we'll talk about your story in a future episode. Thank you so much for stopping by. If it's your first video, we do hope you'll stick around for the next one. We put out new videos in both French and English every second Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by the talented Donovan King, it's all listed in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling experiences. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll have a new video out for you in a couple weeks, but until then, stay spooky.